Welcome back to Kennedal, Croissant All. In this podcast, we'll be looking at the Mesolithic and Neolithic Ages, prehistory of Wales. That is, the Mid and New Stone Age. This is the time when the Welsh first became farmers, and those farming communities built wonderful burial chambers, like this, Cromlech Pentra Ivan. So let's go, Bantany. It's easy to forget how short a time we've been on this earth as humans, and that even shorter time that we've been part of what we might call advanced human societies. It's humbling, I think, to remember that it wasn't so long ago we were all in the Stone Age. So let's continue our story of Wales just as the last glacial period was ending. We need to cover about 8,000 years in about five minutes. Around 10,000 years ago, what is known by British geologists as the Devensian Ice Age was ending, and a warming climate exposed a huge area of Europe for humans to inhabit. We call this the start of the Mesolithic Age, or Midstone Age if you like, which lasted until about six and a half thousand years ago. By around 8,300 years ago, Wales was free from glaciers. Further warming and rising seas gradually flooded the lower lands and created the island of Britain and cut off any land bridge from continental Europe. It also cut off Wales from Ireland and created the Severn Estuary, Moor Havren. However, there is a chance that these changes in sea levels were sometimes more rapid and catastrophic due to tsunamis caused by submarine landslides such as the Sturega landslide and also due to the sudden release of water from glacial lakes in North America. In his A History of Wales, John Davis asks whether these events long ago are stored in the collective consciousness of the Welsh in their ancient folk tales. For example, the story of Cantra Gwaelot, where a whole town is drowned under the sea during the night. And the story from the second branch of the Mabinogion, where the giant king Bendigeidran wades across the shallow sea to Ireland from Wales to save his sister Branwen. According to John David, the whole of Wales, with the exception of the sand dunes, with the exception of the uplands over 750 metres, was covered with a thick canopy of forest. This also saw a change in the flora and fauna. The reindeers and mammoths disappeared from Wales and were replaced by red deer, wild ox and wild boar. The Mesolithic inhabitants of Wales at this time adapted successfully to their new climate by hunting and gathering and using dogs to hunt. There is now evidence that numerous agricultural communities had developed in Wales 6,000 years ago. However, it would be some time still until these primitive humans would evolve into the modern young farmer we see today. Also around this time, the inhabitants of Wales, well before the Egyptians began thinking about building pyramids, began erecting permanent architectural structures called cromlechs, or burial chambers. As they built these cromlechi, they also cleared areas of forest for grazing. Fife, Fife ar Random fact! The name of my local area, Bilth, comes from the Welsh word Bielt, which comes from the words be and gwellt, which means a grazing area for cattle. But perhaps the conquering Normans couldn't say Bielt, so I guess it turned into Bith. One of the most iconic Neolithic cromlechi in Wales can be seen today, at least in part, in Pembrokeshire, Sir Pembro, the cromlech at Pentra Ivan. What I didn't know until recently was that the entrance to the burial chamber was not this wide arch underneath this massive 5 metre long 16 tonne capstone, but here, where we find a portal dolmen and a facade of court canes similar in style to those found in Ireland. In his new book, Cam Mir de Hebar, Rhys Moyn asks the obvious question. If this was the entrance to the chamber, was it a real one or a symbolic one that led to the land of the dead? The area around Pentra Ivan in Pembrokeshire is dotted with Neolithic structures that are well worth a visit. If you can't visit, then please click on the link below this video. It'll take you to Cardu's CGI reconstruction of what Pentra Ivan looked like 
5,000 years ago, when it was the central point of a community of some of the first farmers in Wales. Soon after the time of the Cromlechi came the time of the Henges on the Isle of Britain. Stonehenge, or Cor Cowri, the Choir of Giants, is thought to have been built with 80 bluestones from the Braselli Hills in West Wales. It seems that the ancient Welsh inhabitants attributed a mystical and perhaps holy significance to the Preseli uplands, which would have been prominent as they travelled the seas of southern Britain. This mystical nature is a central theme in the third branch of the Mabinogion tales, when all of western Wales falls under a magical mist created by a vengeful trickster called Llwyd ap Kilcoid. A lesser known but very significant Neolithic monument that was only discovered in the 1990s is known today as the Hindwell Palisaded Enclosure and can be found here in the Radna Valley, the Fryn Maesaved, near the present day Wales England border. The Neolithic Palisaded Enclosure at Hindwell was set in the heart of the Radna Valley, a large fertile plain ringed by hills. Today it's a gateway from England into Wales, taking you from the low British Midlands into the western Welsh hills. The roughly oval enclosure was first recorded as a crop mark feature from the air and is about the size of 35 stadium sized football pitches. When explored, archaeologists found it was defined by a circuit of pits two metres across and two metres deep, which once held great tall posts nearly a metre in diameter. Only a single two metre narrow entrance is known at the western end, flanked by huge six metre diameter pits. Radiocarbon determination point to a construction date around 4,700 years ago. But what was it used for? Was it simply a place to keep grazing animals or was it used for something else? So, here I am on a very warm August day with the local farmers busy at work. This lane here that curves around to the right follows the old line of the Hindwell palisaded enclosure. And that is Hindwell Farm there in the background. This lane, in many ways, is all that's left of the Hindwell enclosure. But if you pop up to the hill behind me for a pint at the Harp Inn, you can look down and imagine the whole valley as it once might have been. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. Please join me for the next one when we'll look at the Celtic influence on Welsh history. Hoyle Matro, Edo. And oh, how they danced, the little children of Stone Age, beneath the haunted moon. According to Welsh legend, Whoever spends a night under the capstone of a cromlech either wakes up a poet or a madman. Well, I don't think I'll be winning the ice ever chair anytime soon, and I feel a new found respect for Boris Johnson. So draw your own conclusions.